Brothers and sisters, welcome to Coffee Conversations in Christ, where we have candid conversations about Catholicism in the world today with a cup of coffee in hand. Brothers and sisters, today we talk about what prayer really means. Let me read the Gospel for today. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not subject us to the final test, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord Brothers and sisters, I was watching this show on Netflix. It's, it's an amazing new show, and it's the first animated series from the Philippines on Netflix called Trece. So the premise is that Trece is part of a family that acts as the midway between beings of the underworld and humans. So Teresa is a, a crime solver seeking to find the balance between the two because her father signed accords with the underworld. So the show utilizes Filipino mythology. So for those familiar, you'd see a lot of creatures that are common within our lore. So this includes Tikbalang, Capre, Chana, etc. etc. But I think an interesting point made within the show or rather an interesting tidbit is how she uses spells and incantations she uses uh, these specific incantations to do specific things sometimes uh, it's a spell on the item itself and sometimes it invokes a deity or, or a greater creature than her and it illustrates the point made within this gospel that the Christian prayer is different from the pagan prayer. How so? The pagan prayer thinks that when the words of man are enough, they can trigger the God. Their God, of course, we know, is not the God of Christianity. Because when we look at Christianity, the God is more akin to a philosophical God. Someone who is uh, eternally simple, who is the basis of all creation, who is outside of the world. The pagan god is a material god. They are all powerful beings, but they are still beings. And so, they are imperfect and require a lot of things to get their work done. So, for example, we read from other cultures the rain dance. The rain dance is done to invoke the god of rain or thunder or the sky or whatever they may call their god. We remember in other cultures an even greater or in this case, even more horrible uh, incantation or invocation of the gods, child sacrifice, to get what they want to, uh, to achieve from the god, they sacrifice children, or perhaps they sacrifice virgins, or whatever the case. But the point is, uh, they use these complicated rituals to get what they want. The Christian prayer is not like that. Yes, we have the Mass which is a bloodless sacrifice. But we remember that what we sacrifice is from Christ himself. So it's not the same. The prayers of the Mass are repetitive, but those aren't the prayers of the pagan rituals. We remember that in the Gospel for today, they condemn the use of babbling or the use of vain words to get the point across. Anti-Catholics often use this to criticize the Mass and the Rosary, saying, it means we shouldn't repeat prayers. The prayer should never be structured. But what does it actually mean? It means that we shouldn't try to invoke God like the pagans who heap up all of these words, all of these incantations to call God. When we look at ancient sources of their prayers, these are long texts, long lists of spells, of needed sacrifices to call on God. To... As 
if they are able to subject him by the use of words. But in our case, we do not need that because the Christian God knows exactly what we need before we even need it. We pray not because we are trying to subject God to our will, but because we are raising our wills to God. What does, it, what is, uh, what does this mean for our prayer? When we try to subject God, it means we are more powerful than God. It means we think that we could do a better job controlling our lives than God. That's why they heap on all of these praises in an attempt to confuse Him or perhaps to convince Him. But that's a fundamental flaw. If God is perfect, if God is all good, all knowing, all powerful, why would you have a better plan than Him? And how would you overpower him through your prayers? The Christian God does not want that kind of prayer. The prayer to the Christian God is a prayer that is an offering to him. What do we mean by this? Whenever we pray, sure, we have petitions. But first and foremost, the, the main petition of every prayer is, Lord, thy will be done. Which is beautifully put in the our father in the pater noster it is first of all a submission of the will because the father knows us more than we know ourselves augustine puts it as the father is closer to us than we are to ourselves and why should we question him why should we try to run away from his plans when we know that at the end of the day he will always have what's best for us in mind we are called to pray humbly. And that is why it's the Our Father. Because the Son is always subjected to the Father. He is always waiting for the will of the Father. It doesn't mean that the Son cannot ask. It doesn't mean that we cannot petition for something different. Even Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane prayed, If you will, Father, remove this cup from me. The Father did not. But that was still a valid prayer. We, we tell the Father what we want. It's not always that we get it. But we submit to the Father. Lord, this is my will. Make it like yours. And sometimes He gives. Sometimes He doesn't. But at the end of the day, it is always fruitful. And we never need specific spells. We never need this long book of incantations. All we need is a humble heart. All we need is a heart that talks to God and says, Lord, I am weak. Lord, I am nothing without you. Bless me with your grace. Be with me till the end of my days. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.